Morning, I've just been reading a quite interesting article that uh, talks about hydrogen fuel cell cars and uh, an investment that the UK government is putting into uh, trying to raise the adoption of them, uh, more filling stations, etc, etc. And it got me thinking, other than a few throwaway comments over some uh, videos, I've not really spoken about hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to update you on what this investment was about and um, to give you a bit of an insight into what I think about uh, hydrogen fuel cells and possibly where the future's going with them. Before we start looking at the future then, let's um, look at what a hydrogen fuel cell car is. Now don't expect anything scientific off me here, I am no scientist, uh, I'm a simple person that likes simple explanations, so that's what I'm going to try and give you. Um, basically a hydrogen fuel cell car is uh, a battery that drives electric motors. In order to charge that battery it requires hydrogen. So hydrogen is pumped into the car, hydrogen is then fed towards the positive terminal of the battery and air is fed towards the negative terminal. The resulting reaction that takes place then between the two in the battery makes the uh, hydrogen electrodes produce electricity. That electric electricity in turn charges the battery, powers the car. So that is a very simple explanation but that is basically how it works. There's some pros and cons to it. The pros are definitely that it is completely zero emissions. It does have a tailpipe, but all that comes out of that is water. The cons are that in order to get hydrogen in the first place to extract it, it takes an awful lot of energy. Uh, in order to store hydrogen, it's quite a big product. So you need big tanks. If you were to um, store it in a vehicle in its natural form, you wouldn't be able to get enough in there to power the vehicle for any decent distance. So you have to reduce the size of it. In order to reduce the size of it so it fits into smaller tanks and condense it right down, you have to use an awful lot of energy to achieve it. So by the time you've used all this energy to extract it and all this energy to condense it, actually that's the biggest con. You've used so much energy that you start to wonder, is it worth the electricity that you've drawn in and where that's come from in order to make this small product that can work in a car that ultimately is just charging a battery. So where, where are we at the moment as far as cars and then infrastructure is concerned? Well, there's some high profile car manufacturers that seem to be investing an awful lot of time and money in hydrogen fuel cells. So surely there must be a future for it because surely they wouldn't do it otherwise. Uh, notable, uh, People are Toyota, uh, it's the, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Myria. Um, it's been around for a few years now. Uh, it seems to be the kind of the, the go-to hydrogen vehicle or has been. Uh, but also we've got people like Honda investing, Hyundai are investing. All these cars we're physically seeing on the roads now. Uh, BMW have said they're going to uh, produce some um, hydrogen fuel cell cars uh, along with some other manufacturers as well. So as I say these are some big high profile companies that are looking to produce these cars. As far as infrastructure is concerned, um, certainly here in the UK, uh, I've had a look on ZapMap before, we've got 11 filling stations across the whole of the UK. Uh, there's a good density, I say a good density, and more than anywhere else or in London, but there's a spread across the UK. So there's not many cars, it's not impossible to find a car to buy, and there's hardly any filling um, stations to actually fill your car up if you then finally get hold of one. Now, if you are fortunate enough to be able to get hold of one of these vehicles and you can go and fill it up, what's it gonna cost you? Is there gonna be any savings to be made? Well, I've got a note here. I had a look on it and I found the it was difficult to try and get some real cost comparisons, but um, the Evening Standard, say a uh, newspaper here in the UK, they did some um, testing of a Toyota Myria against a, a petrol car that did 40 miles to the gallon. What they wanted to do was compare the cost, uh, the pence per mile of a 
40 miles per the gallon petrol car against the Toyota. The Toyota worked out at 17.4 pence per mile, where the petrol car worked out at 16.4 pence per mile. So actually not a lot in it, but you would argue comparable costs to running a petrol car. So there's no real savings there at the moment, um, but that's not to say there won't be because economies of scale really come into play at the moment. And if we've only got a few uh, service stations that provide the hydrogen and very few vehicles, then of course the costs are gonna be really high. So that's not to say that those costs won't reduce. Uh, to give you uh, a comparison, a battery electric vehicle, you're probably looking at about 3p per mile, uh, which even if hydrogen does reduce, that is an awful long way for it to go before we get to our battery electric vehicles. At the moment, I'm seeing more negatives than I am pros. But let's look at the future. Let's look at some of the investment that's gonna happen uh, and see where that might take us. So the UK is part of a, a Europe-wide uh, scheme, effectively to promote hydrogen. Uh, it's called the H2ME project or Hydrogen Mobility Europe project. So they uh, are looking at how they can gain the investment and introduce hydrogen service stations across Europe. Uh, I think they want to uh, invest in 20 uh, and how they can get more hydrogen fuel cell vehicles on the roads. Um, I think sort of 1200 plus vehicles, um, they've started off saying that that's what they want to do. So you, the UK is very much part of that. There's also a separate consortium being set up uh, here in the UK. Uh, and that includes notably among lots of different um, companies, but uh, Shell, Toyota, uh, Hyundai, Honda, yeah, the, the, the vehicles and the companies we've spoken about before. Uh, they have sought 8.8 .8 million pounds worth of investment. They have also put in themselves about another 13 plus million pounds of investment. Uh, and the government have uh, put into that pot uh, just over four million pounds of um, from the Department of Transport. The government have asked for their investment to fund four new hydrogen service stations, to upgrade upgrade five existing ones, and also some investment in vehicles. So uh, I made a note here: they want uh, to fund two hundred hydrogen vehicles, which include uh, taxis and police cars or vehicles of some description. So they're obviously looking at um, high profile vehicles that are gonna be on the road all the time and be seen to try and prove the concept, I guess. So their investment isn't massive, but it's gonna help. But these other companies with their additional investment, it should yield some sort of results and it should actually get to the point where we start to see service stations and hydrogen vehicles out and about much like when electric vehicles first arrived, you wouldn't see one for months and then you'd see the odd one go past. So bit by bit, people will become familiar with them. So that's where we are at the moment and that's the investment here in the UK the government are putting in. So what's my opinion? What do I think? Well, I've kind of gone backwards and forwards on this. Now, I'm not anti-hydrogen fuel cell in any way, shape or form. I think any different fuel source that is good for the environment is a good thing. So um, I'm, I'm certainly not gonna knock it, but I am struggling to see where it sits within our transport infrastructure. Now, as far as personal vehicles are concerned, cars, small vans, I, I don't think that's where it belongs at all. I think the fact that we've got battery electric vehicles that can conveniently charge up anywhere there's a plug socket and it's incredibly cheap, and it can be charged from renewable energy. I don't see how hydrogen is gonna catch up with that. And I don't see how it's better than what we've already got. So I think we can, for me anyway, strike off personal transport. Uh, what about um, buses, coaches, lorries, in particular, in particular, heavy goods vehicles? Well, I think, again, that's the same thing but there could be a place for it because at the moment we haven't really got the infrastructure that would support long distance lorry driving. Uh, so that could work actually. It could give uh, certainly in a big vehicle, 
that's got room for the additional tanks, it could give it some real distance and real mileage and advantage over a battery electric vehicle. But that said, we don't just have to look at the Tesla truck. There's a number of other companies that are developing them as well at the moment, and they're getting a really good range out of them, and they're developing an infrastructure that could charge them. So I think that one's in the balance. I think that could go one of two ways, and it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, what about rail travel then? So that's uh, another form of transport that has been electrified. Uh, I don't think there's a need for it there because lots of the rails are uh, electrified anyway. Uh, potentially, future development of tracks may be because it might save money. So what I mean by that is if you're going to build a, a new section of railway, why put all the electrical infrastructure in with it when you could run a, a hydrogen powered train? Uh, you would just need to fill it up with hydrogen at various points. You wouldn't have to run electric rails or wires throughout the, the, the distance of the track. So maybe there's some saving in building infrastructure there with the ultimate result, you have a hydrogen powered train. So I could see that as being an option. So overall, I really am struggling to see its place in the world. Uh, and I think it's gonna be hindered by the amount of energy, regardless of where that energy comes from, it takes to obtain hydrogen, it takes to uh, condense and store that hydrogen, and the, the end cost of it, because why not use the energy that goes into obtaining and storing the hydrogen, why not just take that energy and put it straight into the vehicle, uh, into its battery without all this other process. It just seems to me like we're overcomplicating things. So there you go. So I've covered it now. Now you know my uh, thoughts on the matter and um, time will tell. We'll see where we end up. Hopefully you've enjoyed that video. Uh, maybe it gave you a bit of an insight. Uh, if you did enjoy it, then please remember to like and share it. If you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and don't forget you can find me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at EV Opinion. And I'll see you again soon. Take care.